Okay. So in the last class, uh, not uh, we looked at the string sort problem. So remember, so the data we wanted to uh, store uh, a list of names. It's okay, we'll get started. I keep, I'll review and then we will see. So we start, uh, uh, so remember the data structure that we used, it's, an, uh, it's a two dimensional array of characters. It's a 2D, this is the one uh, to store the names. So it's a 2D array of characters. So this is row one, row two, row three. So here uh, name, name zero, this is uh, the zeroth name is stored here. And remember, it's all, uh, it's a 2D, it's a matrix. Okay. Um, so here there are two things that are fixed. So here this is uh, max array size, and uh, the the number of rows and the number of columns are fixed. So this is like for example the number of columns is max name underscore len. And uh, the number of rows uh, is again max array underscore size, number of rows and number of. So uh, needless to see, you know, like for example, if you define uh, this as let's say 50, if the size of the, if the number of characters in the name is less than 50, memory goes waste. And if the number of characters is greater than uh, 50, you cannot store such names. So it's a problem. So, but there is not, not much we can do about it by taking this approach. So we have to use an alternate approach where we read a name and based on the size of the name, we uh, allocate memory, we allocate memory. So right now, if you see the names, uh, the two dimensional array names is allocated memory on the stack, on the activation record associated with the function main, that is where the, the memory is allocated for, uh, uh, for the 2D array. So now what we do is we take an alternate approach. Uh, the reason, so if you look at the program layout, uh, so if this is our program, in our program, remember this is our RAM, main memory. So part of the RAM, so let's say, so part of the RAM, this is our BIOS. This is the lower address, zero x zero, and addresses keep increasing. Like let's say the addresses here is zero x f f f f. Okay, and then there is a, so basic, so in the part of the memory map, it is occupied by BIOS and part is uh, operating system kernel. And then uh, there is a place, uh, there is uh, for uh, where you store your code. And, uh, and then you have your program stack. And there is also a section of memory, which we call as heap, heap memory. So what happens is, you know, when the memory that is allocated to local variables in a function, they are allocated on the stack. And once we are out of the function, the memory that is allocated uh, disappears. Okay. So that is how the whole thing works. Like for example, 
in the bubble sort program, swap underscore count, uh, this temp str, these are allocated memory on the activation record associated with the bubble sort function. And after we are out of the bubble sort function, uh, what happens? So uh, the memory allocated to swap count, uh, this uh, temp str array, it's all released. So now we use a different approach. Okay, now we use a different approach for uh, memory allocation. Let's see. So we want to so what we are going to do is we are going to change our data type controllers sim sort two dot so now we are going to define uh, names as an array of uh, character pointers. Do you see on line number 81 what it means is? It's an array of character pointers. Are you all with me here? How bad is the screen lag? Okay. Are you all with me on uh, line number 81 that we change the data type? And uh, so name of zero, it's a pointer to a character. Okay, that means it can point to a string because in order to point to a string in the memory, it, we just need to point to the first character of the string. So now we are defining an array of character pointers that is on line number 81. So now let's look at the read name function. So, so this is our read name function. And here uh, we have to modify this code a uh, little bit. Uh, so here, car temp temp name okay we'll give some big so let's assume if we have uh, no max name yeah, max name so here we have is max name underscore len is still our worst case estimate of the length so now what we do is we read our name into this temp name uh, string. So what should I do? Okay. And share and share. Oh, I see the problem. On a different uh, terminal today, I gave a virtual machine for download and uh, it is hogging the network bandwidth. I see, I see. Okay, what should I do now? It is 62% done, but it takes time to... Yeah, I'm just thinking, but I don't know how to pause it, delete. Mm. If I delete it, then it again it takes. If I control C it, I don't know what will happen. You can turn off my camera and see. 
Okay, great. Let's try. Okay, I didn't expect uh, just now. I read. Download again, it takes time. It is 65% or something. So, okay. So now do you see what is happening here? So on uh, so we are reading the the name that is entered on the at the keyboard into this temp name array. And here we use uh, uh, names. And no names is equal to. So we are now using a function called as mlloc. Okay, let's do one thing. Then I have to. I'll cancel this. Okay, done. So it should now it should be all right. Uh, okay, so we use mlloc function and we want to allocate memory uh, string length temp name. Okay, so mlloc function it takes uh, some number and it allocates that much amount of memory from heap. Okay. And we say car star indicating, and we cast it to a character pointer because names number. Okay. And also the signature of this function also changes. So whether string length gives, uh, let's do man strlen. String length function calculates the length of the string pointed to by s, excluding the terminated null symbol. Thanks for thank you for bringing that up, uh, Nan Prakash. So we want to allocate plus one. We want to, what is so? Do you see what is happening? We are using mlloc function to allocate memory from what is called as a heap, and this allocated memory stays until we make an explicit free call. We make a call to free unless we make a call, uh, release that memory by making a function call to free, uh, it will be there. All right, and then what do we do? And then we do string copy, uh, string copy names, number of, and uh, temp name. Huh. Okay, and here we should uh, return just this not minus one. And in order to, since we are having a strl string copy is already, uh, no, it is available through st string dot h. So we remove this, let's remove this one. And uh, I think where is mlloc present? mlloc is present man mlloc mlloc is present in stdlib.h so these two are important okay these two are important mlloc function free even the other things are also important but yeah but for the time being let's focus on mlloc and free so stdlib.h is also included so now print names function also we will change 
it's an array of uh, yeah so string copy print printf percent s names of i all right so for the time being we will comment out the bubble sort code and we will come to bubble sort code later so essentially what happens is uh, mloc just returns a chunk of memory the chunk of memory you can use for uh, any purpose it can you can use it to store a string of characters or you can use it to store uh, an integer or you can use it to store an array of integers you can use mloc for any purpose so that is the reason mloc just returns a pointer and it says void star void means you know it doesn't know the type kind of thing so whatever the data type which you would like to use that memory for you have to do appropriate explicit type cast or you are with me on line number 40 what we are doing here so our number our names function names names this is our names so let's say this is our whole uh, uh this is our memory and this is names of zero for as a shortcut i am using capital n and n of 1 n of 2 and then here in the this is our heap let's assume this is our heap let's say initially if you enter uh, jainith uh the first name then what happens is jainith is five characters so is array of five characters is uh, allocated memory in the heap and the base address let's say the base address is uh, here of this byte base address of this byte is uh, a1 then we are storing a1 here are you with me everyone and let's say after that let's say you know the, the the next name is tejas and let's say then when we do mloc so mloc doesn't guarantee that the memory the chunks of memory that you request they are adjacent to each other let's say this is the place that the base address here is b1 so here this this is this memory is for uh, tejas and this memory is for jaini so b1 will go here so there is it's not necessary that you know whenever you do an mloc the the chunk of memory that is given to you is uh, adjacent to the previous call that we made they may not be adjacent but whatever the chunk that is given it is contiguous block whatever the chunk that is given it is a contiguous block all right so now when you make an mloc call we tell mloc how much amount of memory you require mloc gets that much amount of memory from the heap and gives the base address of that memory and we have to use the base address to access the chunk of memory okay are you all with me here b1 is the base address uh given by mloc function the base addresses might not be adjacent but whatever the memory that you get in a single mloc call it is all contiguous what is the advantage that we get here for for jainith i need six characters for tejas i need five characters for amoga i need six characters for you know divich for srija it is five lakshmipati 
no three six uh, ten eleven it's so eleven characters so how much amount of memory you require only that much you request are you all with me here that is the purpose of mlock how much amount of amount of memory you require only that much you re you request don't worry about time etc just get this basic thing right and all that memory is allocated the memory that is allocated in a single mlock call it is all contiguous to each other okay so perhaps we can do a gdb on this program and uh, let's yeah so do you now understand how the print names function is working because in order to print a string we just need to pass the base address to the printf function that's all na no? so gcc what is that string sort two dots see we just read and printed the file so let's do a gcc minus uh, g gdb a dot out main okay break read okay so now uh, we are on line 11 and uh, we go to line 13 this is a scanf let's say i enter ball so now when we enter if you look at print temp name you see print and temp name contains balu followed by null character are you with me this is to start with so now how much when we when we request mlock to allocate five bytes of memory okay so right now let look look at print names zero print names zero i know it it contains some address some garbage address okay and uh, so gdb is trying to be smart and uh, so it is trying to print the string actually but it should just give the address there okay yeah it's actually the address is there okay so that this is the address that is present in print names zero and that's not a, at this point since it's a garbage address it's not accessible it may or may not be accessible but gdb knows uh, hey you know what what the address that is present in names zero is not accessible uh if you go and try to access that you will get segmentation fault next but now you do print names uh, zero you got an address so this is a base address that is written by that is given by the mlock function mlock function allocated 5 bytes of memory and the base address of this 5 bytes is uh is what are the address that you are seeing here 6b0 are you all with me and then when we do next uh, what happens is uh, we are doing a string copy that is copying the name that is stored in temp name to the new chunk of memory we got print names 0 see now uh the the string that is present 
in temp name variable it got uh, moved to or copied to uh, the new y plus one because uh, in order to store balu so balu is uh, balu plus a null character string when we use string length function string length function doesn't count uh, the null character we just looked at the man page for string length right so the man page for string length function says i don't count uh, null character okay next now we are going back now print names one you see names one again has uh, no some uh, some garbage value it can be zero or whatever next uh, is scanf so let's say navi so now you do print temp name you see navin followed by null character and then so for mlock uh, what how much memory we ask from mlock 7 yeah 6 plus null character 7 next and then if you see print names 1 you will see this is the address this is a new uh, a chunk of 7 bytes of memory is allocated and the base address is returned and that base address is stored in names one and then after we do the string copy if we do print the names one you get uh, this navin or you are with me here the names array is stored in the stack the names array which is a character of pointers it is stored in the no 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 it doesn't store anything so names uh, line 14 it only allocates memory that's all so gb gdb is just being smart here this is not the job of mlock mlock only returns memory resource memory and the base address of that uh, memory is returned back to us and we are storing it in this uh, character pointer variable okay so yeah so let's keep going so that's all so we uh, will we come out of this gdb this is what uh, i would like you to understand so the important thing here is this names array of characters array of character pointers it is allocated memory on the stack but what happens is uh, you know all in this read names function we are reading names and for every name that we read we allocate memory from the heap and uh, you know uh, yeah uh, so that's how we are able to solve the problem that we don't uh, over allocate or under allocate uh, memory to uh, to hold names so now we have to fix the bubble sort function because now we are using a different uh, data type uh, for to store the so to start with bubble sort now takes an array of character pointers so this is now going to be very interesting so when we want to uh yeah so earlier what we are doing is uh, the way we are swapping uh, to uh like for example let's look at this okay so this is pointing to so this is pointing to this uh, and uh, this one is pointing to this name so and let's say yeah so instead of jainit here let's say what we have here is your uh the name that we have is ujwal so that means uh, we want to swap when we compare n of 0 and n of 1 we want to swap uh, ujwal and uh, we don't want to, one way of 
we cannot copy Ujwal to Tejas because the memory that is allocated for Tejas and the memory that is allocated for Ujwal is uh, different. So you cannot say I will do a string copy from this to this chunk and this chunk to this chunk. It's not going to work. Are you with me here? Earlier it was all right when it was a 2D array, but now it's not all right. You cannot just copy Ujwal to Tejas and Tejas to Ujwal. Uh, in this particular case, yes, because both of their names are, the size of the both of their names are same. But if I change, if I get the right spelling for Ujwal, U G U J G J J W L W, then Ujwal length is uh, six and Tejas is five, so you cannot do string copy. So what should we do? We should make. Uh, we have to swap the address. We have to. The way we want to handle this, we want to make n of zero. The new thing that we want to have is we want to make n of zero point two uh, tejas and n of one point two uh, ujwal. Are you all with me? We want to swap the pointers. That is, in other words, we want b one here and we want a one here. Okay, so swapping the address, that's what we want to do. So, yeah, so in order to swap an address, what should be the data type? Temp PTR to PTR. So what should, no, I don't think we need that. We just need temp PTR. Temp pointer. So, can you help me out here? So, we store temp PTR is equal to uh, what should we have here? Names of i and uh, names of i is equal to names of i plus 1 okay and then names of uh, i plus 1 is equal to temp here does this work the code i have written The challenge problem for you is uh, challenge problem. Write a swap function. for the following, that is the challenge problem. Okay, now let's see if it is working or not. GCC string sort one dot C Sixty four. Okay, we got it. Are you all with me on this code? It is working, so so we just swap the pointers here, okay? Instead of swapping the doing the way as against the way we did before. Awesome. 
so the right now so if you want to do in this particular case we are not freeing memory because when we exit the program all the memory that is allocated automatically gets freed but later on you will see when you do memory allocation using mloc as soon as the memory utilization is over you have to free it explicitly it does not get freed the lifetime of the memory that is allocated using mloc is until you release the memory using a free function we will see that in later class in detail but in today's class in this session now if you can understand this code if you are able to understand this code i am happy the memory is not released after you exit from the program memory is released after you exit from the program but throughout the program execution whatever the memory that is allocated it still stays it still stays whether you are out of no names uh, amoga what is the data type for names the data type for names is uh, every element no it's not character it's a character pointer a character pointer it, its length is 64 bits and you can store uh, the address base address any integer value you can store so even if the stack so the mloc has got nothing to do with the stack okay even after you return from a function so that is the reason even after you return from read names the memory that is allocated using mloc it still remains okay why it is working huh? no i didn't change it but still it is working Ah, okay, okay. Let's. Uh, there is this. Oh, interesting. Huh? good question it's not lag jainit that is me thinking i'm stuck <laughs> since so yeah there is a lag in my thought process someone it's a very good point it's not clear why uh, how c language is interpreting but a good point very good point uh, so i think we have to see why it is working but the right way to do it is this this is the right way to do it anyway on line 44 it is uh, i leave it to you it is uh, uh, yeah how the semantics of it is being uh, done it's not clear to me uh but the right way to do it is what you are seeing on line 45 yeah you do the gdb tejas and you, someone can explain you know tell uh, post in the group why line 44 is working uh it's so divish there is a reason why you know 2d array also because it gets mapped put to something else so uh, we we will see in the next class maybe but at least line 45 does it make sense because for string compare we need to pass the base address 
So line 45 uh, should make sense. It is a perfectly valid thing to do. There is no surprise there, but let's run the program and see. Yeah, it's working. The right way to do it is line 45. Line 44, uh, something weird is happening. Uh, we have to see, okay. Shall we move on and try to solve the next problem in this series? So the next problem is the number of names, I know right now it is fixed. We can handle a maximum of 50 names, but uh, we would like to, you know, have uh, uh, 30 names, 40 names or whatever it is. And there are a couple of ways of handling this. Can you suggest me one way of handling a variable uh, names? But of course, you know, at the beginning of the database, you know, uh, you know the number of names at the beginning. How do you do if, uh, if you know that at the beginning, when you are about to run the program, you know the number of names. Yeah, the base address of the zeroth element in the string is same as the base address for the string. Yes, yes. Okay. So one way is uh, printf enter number of names. Okay. We well, let's move on. We will. Uh, I know. We will catch up on that again. Number of names, and then. Uh, this is the approach we used. This is the approach of we using variable length arrays in C. Are you with me on this one? Does this work? And then we have to modify the read names function, everything accordingly. Oh, scanner. Okay, okay, sorry. Sometimes I. Okay. So this is one approach. Seventy one, what should I do? Okay. So using variable length uh, arrays, we can uh, do this uh, work. We can't take the number of names while typing. What do you mean? Oh, okay. So, so in order to do that, okay, so uh, there are, uh, yeah. So right now, this problem, the problem with that we are having, good question, Divich. So right now, the problem that we are having is we need to know the number of names before. 
but if you don't know the number of names before, how do we solve that problem? Okay, we have to we keep reading. And then once we hit end of file, we want to stop. In order to get there, so we can use uh, a new approach, uh, which can be, okay, so, so what we do here is, uh, you know, initially, so we have an approach here, so we will, yeah. So now we use a pointer to pointer. So now what we want to have is uh, in the memory, so in the memory, so what we will have is, uh, we will have a variable called names and, uh, and then in the heap, this is our heap. Okay, let's say this is all our heap memory. In the heap memory, we initially allocate uh, an array of character pointers. We initially allocate some number of uh, character pointers, array of character pointers, and we make it point to the base address of this uh, array. So what should be the data type for names? What is the data type of this? What is the data type of this element? So the data type of this element is a character pointer because this points to some other uh, thing in the name in the heap. So this is a character pointer and this points to this. So this is a pointer to a character pointer, char star star, pointer to a character pointer. Are you with me here? We are, so that's the reason we use char star star names. And what we do is, uh, uh, I want to take this topic in the next class. In the last five minutes, we will not be able to do. Uh, but anyway, let's, uh, let's see. Let's keep going and then how much ever we can cover, we will cover. So in star star names, and we are pa passing this to, yeah. So actually we just call read names, okay. We just call read names function. And read names function, it will give, it will give the base address of this uh, array, okay? And what this is how, so what it will do is initially, so when we initial, so initially we allocate, we allocate, so int flag is equal to zero. We are using some flag. Pay attention, guys. We are going to get into some serious stuff now. Okay. Init array size. So when we initially enter, so initially we don't know the size of the array. We should uh, we should know we don't know the size of the array initially. Uh, so what we do is when we enter the uh, when we enter star 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 names. So what we do is uh, uh, so we do uh, we say malloc 
init array size times size of character pointer. So on line number 15, on line number 15, we are allocating uh, memory for an array of uh, 50 character pointers. Are you all with me here? Line number 15, we are asking MLOC, hey, I need memory to store an uh, array of uh, character pointers. Uh, the, the size of each character pointer, the memory required for each character pointer is, uh, is this eight bytes. We use size of function to get it. Are you with me with the size of? This is better. So we will start with an estimate of 50. Okay, we'll start with an estimate of 50. We may, yeah, so there will be some wastage, but it's not like thousands of uh, characters wastage, bytes wastage. And the initial estimate we are making, we are saying the, our initial estimate that the array size could be 50. We are making that thing. And uh, so after that, so it's all same, uh, names of uh, zero, MLOC, everything remains the same. And here, what we do is uh, if uh, number of names, is greater than uh, init array size. Okay. Uh, print f sorry can't read any more names and. Uh, yeah, and also let's do one more thing. So what we will do is uh, we will have a number of uh, so we want to return the number of names read also. Okay, we want to return the number of names read and the number of uh, no and the base address of the character pointer array. Given uh, where we are right now, we don't know how to return both of them together. So at some point, you know, uh, we will fix this. So how do we solve this problem? So we will do one thing uh, in order to make it simple for the time being, we use uh, the number of names variable. We make it what is called as a global variable. If it is global variable, then it is uh, accessible for uh, all the functions. Are you with me? I'm trying to find some tricks to solve the problem. We'll have a more clear, clean solution later. So we are in this function, we are uh, having a global variable number of names, which is accessible from main also, which is accessible from main also. So return names. Okay, this is return names. Okay, and here in the print names function, so so this is what we are going to do. Int i less than number of names, names, okay. And we will worry about bubble sort later. Line 19 needs to be changed. What is line 19? Let's see, I'm thinking line 19 may still work. We will see.
Okay, let's clear the screen. Interesting errors. Format with printf expected. Okay, so let's do one thing. We will uh, uh, we will continue this uh, code in the next class. Okay, we will stop here. There is one particular way of doing it, but uh, in line eighty. What is that? No, no, it's okay. So we will uh, take a, we'll pause here and uh, we will catch up with this. This is going to be, we are going to do an involved thing, couple of involved things that we are going to do. Uh, that we will do in the, uh, in the next Tuesday class. This code we will continue in the next Tuesday class. But are you all with me till string sort three? Shall we take a step back and you're all with me till string sort three? You're okay, right? String sort four, we will, four, we will uh, take it up in the next Tuesday class. Friday afternoon, I want to talk about Gaussian elimination and LU decomposition. So next week, you will learn about linked lists. Saturday, nothing. I, Saturday class, I am moving to Friday. 